All right, guys, let's go ahead and start off with this FRQ question. This is uh, question number five from 2017. Um, two particles move along the x-axis, so we're moving horizontally there. <clears throat> On a time interval from 0 to 8, the position of P at any given time is this. So this is a position function. And the velocity of particle Q at any given time is given by this. So this is a velocity function. So we've got two different particles. For one, they gave me the position function. And for the other one, they gave me the velocity function. And then for particle Q, they tell me an initial condition. They tell me at um, t equals 0, the position is 5. So we have two different particles. That's something to be aware of. We have particle P, and then we have particle Q. Now, for particle P, they're giving us the position function. I'll abbreviate that POS. And the position function is the one that they gave us. Now, at some point along the way, they're probably going to ask us to find velocity. That would be the derivative of this function. And they may also ask us or need us to find the acceleration. That would be the second derivative. Now, for particle Q, they're giving us the velocity function. So the acceleration can be found by taking the derivative of that. Its position, though, we've got to work backwards, and we've got to integrate it. So the position can be found by doing the starting position, um, we don't have a symbol for that, so what we'll do is, is I'll, do, I'll make a new symbol here. I'll call it x with a q. The position can be found by doing its starting position plus the displacement. Okay, so that's probably a good place to, to start is being aware of these things. So we have two particles, particle P and Q. They gave us different things. For this one, we have the position given. And for Q, we have this one given. And then I've shown you how you can find the velocity and acceleration of each one. Okay. So I haven't even solved any problems yet, but I think that's a good place to start. Now, for part A, on the time interval from 0 to 8, when is particle P moving to the left? So for part A, P moves left when, which one of these tell me the direction an object is traveling? Does the position tell me the direction it's traveling? No, the position tells me where it's at. Velocity is the thing that tells me where a, the direction an, our, a particle is moving. So P moves left when X prime is negative. Moving left means that the particle is, or, or the velocity is negative. Now, this is not a calculator-based question, so I need to find the derivative of this function and make it less than zero. So X prime of t is going to be, this is a chain rule we would have to do. We have an ln, and then we have a, a, a t squared on the inside there. So the derivative of ln is going to be 1 over the inside. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is 2t minus 2, and that's just going to end up going in the numerator like that. Now, I want to know, when is this thing negative? When is this zero, uh, less than zero? When is it negative? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a number line test using the critical values. So the critical values can be found when the top equals zero or when the bottom equals zero. When the top equals 0, that's what makes the whole thing equal 0. 
When the bottom equals zero, that's when it makes it undefined. But both of those are potential critical values. So for the first one here, I get one. For the second one, you could use quadratic formula if you prefer. But I get five and negative two. Now I can get rid of the negative two because we're only looking at a time interval of zero to eight and negative two is not on that interval. So we're only gonna look at one and five. I'm out of space here, so I need to erase, but those are my critical values. And now I'll do my number line test. We're going from 0 to 8, and I've got two critical values, 1 and 5. And I need to test these intervals and find out when x prime of p, and de determine if it's positive or negative on each one of these intervals. If it's negative, I'm moving to the left. If it's positive, then I'm moving to the right. So I would need to plug in something like 0.5 here. Here I would need to plug in something like 2. And here I would need to plug in something like 6. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do the, the 6 one here. If I plug in 6 to the top and bottom, I'm going to need to get uh, it'll be 2 times 2 times 6 is 12. Take away 2 is 10. 6 squared is 36. Take away 2 times 6, which is 12. So 36 take away 12 is 24, plus 10 is 34. That's a positive value, so that one's positive. Okay, And we'll just kind of keep doing that for these other ones here. Um, so for the, the next one, I would have a... This one's positive, and then if I plug in 0.5 and, and do my work, I'm not going to show my work here in the interest of time, but that one comes out to be negative. So that means this is the interval where we're moving to the left, and so we would say this happens on and there we go. Alright, so there you guys have it. P moves to the left when its velocity is negative. Here's its velocity. I did a number line test using the critical values to find out where the velocity is negative and it's on the interval from 0 to 1. So that's when the particle is moving to the left. Let's take a look at another question here, part B. Find the times whenever the two particles are traveling in the same direction. So for part B, once again, it's asking about the direction. Now, from part A, we already have this. This is going to be helpful, so I'm going to bring this back. We know that this was negative, this was positive, and this was negative for the velocity. I'm going to put, I'm going to label that. Okay, that was from part A. So that means that the object is moving to the left on this interval, and then for these two intervals, it's moving to the right. Okay. So now for the other one, I want to know when both the particles are moving in the same direction, though. So now I need to look at this one. I need to look at particle Q. Now, if I want to know what direction particle Q is traveling, once again, I need to look at its velocity, and that's the function they gave us. We need to find the critical values for that one. So we're going to set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve. I get two critical values, which is 5 and 3. So I'm going to make a number line test for that one also. I'm going to put it right above this other one. I think you'll find that that's helpful, and I'll explain why in a minute. But for now, 3. I'm going to put 3 right about here because I want it to be between the 1 and the 5. Um, and then the other one is 5 here. And this is the number line test for v, q of t. All right. And once again, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick some numbers to plug in. 
and figure out is it positive or negative on these intervals. So for my first interval here, between 0 and 3, I want to pick a number. So let's say I pick 1, and I'm going to plug that into my velocity. If I plug in 1, I get a positive outcome. Let's pick in, now we're into the next interval from 3 to 5. So obviously I'll be plugging in 4. So let's plug in 4 and see what we get. That comes out to be a negative 1. So that's a negative interval there. And then finally for my last interval, I'm going to plug in 6. Um, let's see, that's 36, take away 48, so that's negative 12 plus 15, that's 3, so that's a positive. So, the particle Q is moving to the right on this interval, and then it's moving left on this interval, and then it's moving right on this interval. Now, the question is asking us, on what intervals are they moving in the same direction? In other words, when are they both moving to the left, or when are they both moving to the right? So, now to help us answer that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the numbers from each number line um, to the other number line. So, for instance, I'm going to put the 1 here. I'm going to put the 3 here. That way they all have the same intervals, and we'll compare them. So, let's, let's look at this interval first from 0 to 1. Are they moving the same direction? No. This one's moving left. This one's moving right. So that's not the same. So let's get out of there. Let's look at the next interval. How about from 1 to 3? Are they moving in the same direction? Yes. This one is moving to the right, and so is this one. So there's one interval where they're moving in the same direction. Let's look at the next interval. Um, from 3 to 5. Particle Q is moving to the left, but from 3 to 5, particle P is still moving to the right. So those ones don't match. So I'll unhighlight that. And let's look at one more interval here. From here to here, particle Q is moving to the right, and from here to this one's also moving to the right. So we have two intervals where they are moving in the same direction, and those intervals are from 1 to 3 and 5 to 8. Okay, um, now your explanation kind of matters here. Um, I've been told that they don't really like number line tests for an explanation, unfortunately. Um, so you do need to know how to explain this. So what you can do is, is you could say V, Q, T, and X prime P, T. On these intervals, they're both positive. And then for this one, they're also both positive. You would want to include that in your explanation. Um, it actually doesn't say to explain, so they may not really care. So I, I think maybe this would be good enough since they didn't ask for an explanation, but just I, I think it's good for us to practice because sometimes they will say justify your reasoning. And in that case, just want you guys to be aware they do not consider number line tests to be an explanation. That's just a tool that we use. Your explanation needs to include the fact that both velocities have the same sign, and that's why they're moving in the same direction. Okay, so that's part B. Let's go ahead and take a look at part C. Part C says, find the acceleration of particle Q at t equals 2. And then they want to know, is the speed increasing, decreasing, or neither at t equals 2? And explain our reasoning. Now, we already talked about how to find the acceleration of particle Q. Since they gave me the velocity, the acceleration of particle Q is equal to the derivative of the velocity 
a particle uh, q. And if we want to find the acceleration at t equals 2, then I need to plug two into that derivative. So first of all, let's find the derivative. The derivative is 2t minus 8. And if I plug in 2, I get negative 4. Okay? So that's the acceleration. So right there, I'm sure that would be worth one point on this exam is getting that question right. Now they want to know what's up with the speed. Is it increasing, decreasing, or neither? Well, we've talked about how speed is increasing when velocity and acceleration have the same sign and it's decreasing when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. So I know that acceleration has a negative sign. Let's find the velocity. So let's just do V of 2 now. I end up with 15. Notice that they're opposite signs, and so that means the speed is decreasing. In other words, it's slowing down. Okay, so here's how I would write this answer. I would say at t equals 2, the speed is decreasing. Since v prime of 2 is negative while the velocity itself at 2 is positive. They're opposite signs. Okay, So you get one point for finding your acceleration. We found out that was negative 4. And you'd probably get two points for this answer over here, getting the correct answer as well as the explanation. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at part D now. It says, find the position of particle Q when it first changes direction. This is a two-part question. First of all, I need to find where it changes direction. And once I find where it changes direction, then I'm going to find its position at that time. So first of all, let's find where it changes direction. How can you tell where a particle changes direction? Well, you do, you find the critical values and you do a number line test. Now we already did that earlier back up here. And what we found for that was we found that the particle was traveling, I'm trying to remember what it was now, I've got to refresh my memory. We found out that it was positive here, negative here, and positive here, which means that it was moving to the right, then it starts moving to the left, and then it starts moving to the right again. So at 3, it changes direction, and at 5, it changes direction. They want us to find the position the first time it changes direction, so that's this one. So it's changing direction at 3. Now they want me to find the position. Now we mentioned earlier that the position of particle Q is going to be given by the starting position plus the uh, displacement from the beginning time to the ending time. So, just so you know, we probably have already gotten one point for finding the time when they change directions. Um, now, we would be getting probably about two points for finding the position. The first thing would be, did you set it up correctly? They want to know, do you, want, do you know how to find the position? Then, do you actually get the right answer? So, let's go ahead and start working that one out. It was t squared. I forgot what the equation was. Minus 8t plus 15. OK. 
Okay, so the 5 is going to stay the same, but we are going to integrate this function here. So if I plug in 3, I get 9 minus 36 plus 45. And then if I plug in 0, this whole thing just becomes 0, so we can ignore that. <clears throat> and then we can combine all these things here together. Um, that would all come out to be, I think, 23, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so there's our position. So you get one point for finding the time and then using that time to find the position, which is 23. So my guess is this is a three-point question. One point for finding the time, one point for getting this thing set up, and one point for actually working it out to get the correct answer in the end. All right, let's move on and let you guys practice these.